Oh my god, fucking Twitter, the Twitter dick, Jack, the Twitter CEO is currently using a, a thread about Donald Trump to plug his Bitcoin. Wasn't there a giant Bitcoin crash? Just like, yeah, unironically, unironically. You want to read it? Watch. Ready? Look, you get to have some surprise coverage. I do not celebrate or feel pride in our having to ban real Donald Trump from Twitter or how we got here. After a clear warning, we take this action. We made a decision with the best information we had based on threats to physical safety, both on and off Twitter. Was this correct? I believe this was the right decision for Twitter. We faced extraordinary and untenable circumstance, forcing us to focus all of our actions on public safety. Offline harm as a result of online features speech is demonstrably real and what drives our policy and enforcement above all that said having to ban an account has real and significant ramifications while there's clear and obvious exceptions i feel a ban is a failure of ours ultimately to promote he healthy conversation and time for us to reflect on our operations and the environment around us having to take these actions uh, having to take these actions fragment the public conversation. They divide us. They limit potential for clarification, redemption, and learning, and sets a precedent I think is dangerous. The power of an individual or a corporation. The check and accountability on this power has always been the fact that a service like Twitter is one small part of a larger pl public conversation happening across the internet. If folks do not agree with our rules and enforcement, they can simply go to another service. This concept was challenged last week when a number of foundational internet tool providers decided not to host what they found dangerous. I do not believe this was coordinated. More likely, companies came to their own conclusions. Uh, or were emboldened by the actions of others. This moment in time might call for this dynamic, but over the long term, it will be destructive to the noble purpose and ideals of an open internet. A company making a business decision to moderate itself is different from a government removing access, yet can feel much the same. Yes, we all need to look critically at inconsistency for, of our policies and enforcement. Yes, we need to look at how our service might incentivize distraction harm. Yes, we need more transparency in our moderation operations. Um, see you later, Kyoju. Bye. Absolutely. Hope you have a great day. All these can't erode a free and open global internet. The reason I have so much passion for hashtag Bitcoin is largely because of the model it demonstrates, a foundational internet technology that is not controlled or influenced by any single individual or entity except when it is. This is what the internet wants to be, and over time, more of it will be. Uh, listen. Do we all remember the saga of Mount Gox? I'm sure the Jedi's wouldn't have told you about that one. Mount Gox. Anybody know about Mount Gox? Um, all right. All right, I'll tell you the Mount Gox story. Okay, I'm going to tell the Mount Gox story, okay? It's, it's so funny, okay? All right. The tragedy of Mount Gox, the wise, the unwise, or actually one wise person at Mount Gox and lots of other not wise people. This was a couple of years ago, okay? Um, actually, let's start at the beginning. Actually, no. Let's start in the middle of things. In Midias Res, okay? In the middle of things. In the Greek tradition. In the Shakespearean tradition. So, there was once a website, a Bitcoin trading website, called Mount Gox. And it had a little mountain icon and uh yeah the loots intensify bling 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 um but yes uh there was a company called mount gox and what they were was a bitcoin exchange what that means is that they handle uh trades so they will facilitate trades because as it turns out it's pretty difficult to manually do trades um on bitcoin you have to send a big long strings to one another and authorize it you so a lot of these services appeared um that were exchanges and what they would do is they would functionally you would have an account with them and they would hold your bitcoin and they would send it back and forth between other people which would allow for the buying and selling of bitcoin you know um you know think of like no mount gox like g like g-o-x mount gox m-t-g-o-x okay um now mount gox was an exchange now like all exchanges and all banks in the world, you have to trust a bank, right? So when you go to the bank and you give them their, the, your money, how do you know that the bank teller isn't just going to run away with your money? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about when you go to the bank, when you hand over your check to the teller, why they don't just take it and run away? Well, 
there's an employment structure, there's cameras, there's a vault, all kinds of stuff. And in the bigger picture, we have, um, you know, federal insurance. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, FTC insurance, exactly. Federal Trade Commission insurance. So even if a bank does steal your money, you, the FDIC, yeah, exactly. F FDIC, that's the one, F not FTC, FDIC. Um, yeah, the, uh, the federal something, whatever it's called. Anyway, FDIC. So that's how you can trust, within a certain degree, a bank. You know what I mean? Now, online, this is different, correct? Because if you hand your money over to, uh, say, a company like Mt. Gox, which is an online exchange, they might seem very legit. They might have a lot of users. But they're not as big as a government. You know, when the government issues... Um, hey, hey, Lonnie, good to see you. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're talking about the, we're talking about the tragedy of Bitcoin, the tragedy of Mt. Gox. You're not likely to hear this from the council of tech bros. You know about this, Lonnie? Do you know about it? Um, anyway, it's real good. So as we were, what I was talking about specifically um, is how you can trust a bank and why people trust banks. So a real bank is backed in our, in our case by the FDIC, um, which, you know, say the bank collapses, the government will pay you money to a up to a certain amount so that you don't lose all your money. It's a certain system. It's regulation. It's not free market, by the way, it's regulation that we've done to prevent horrific consequences in the past aka banks going under and thousands of people losing all of their life savings that they trusted a bank with it's kind of wild um it's kind of wild um but you don't get that with bitcoin and you don't get that with mount gox because mount gox is an independent exchange and while they have a fancy website and a fuckload of users they're not backed by any federal government. And in fact, that's part of the draw. You know what I mean? Right? Because the idea is, well, with Bitcoin, you don't want federal governments to be able to track the money. You want the money to be independent of, a, of, a, of any state. I mean, that's the philosophy behind Bitcoin. It's decentralized. Right. However, you do centralize a lot when a lot of people start using the same exchange. And as it turns out, a lot of people used Mt. Gox. A lot of people used Mt. Gox. As in a fucking lot. Billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin was being managed by Mt. Gox. Now, does anybody know what Mt. Gox stands for? If you know, don't tell. But if you know, don't tell. Anybody know? Anybody want to hazard a guess? Don't tell if you know, but try and hazard a guess what you think Mount Gox, where they got their name from. Anybody know? Mountain Get Out Xander Hall. Nope. Can't fathom. Give over cash, suckers. Green Cox. Nope. Nope. All right, I'm going to tell you right now. M? Wait, wait, wait. How about this? I'll give you a hint. Does anybody know of the acronym MTG? Anybody know that one? Anybody have a guess about what that might mean? MTG? Ah, yes. We have Petey Pete, Magic the Gathering. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mount Gox was a rebrand of a website called Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. It was a forum where people would go to trade valuable cards. Now, it had some repute among trading card enthusiasts. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's right. That's right. Now, it had some repute among trading card enthusiasts. But as we know, billions of dollars of Bitcoins is worth significantly more than thousands of dollars of Magic the Gathering cards, right? I think we can acknowledge that. However, most people using the service never knew 
that M Mount Gox used to just be a humble trading card company. And their brand didn't show that at all. They got rid of their old forums. Their website just became Mount Gox. And it all had like pictures of people in suits and all kinds of stuff like that. So they, they cleaned up real good. What's Rudy from Alpha Investments got to say about this? I don't know. We'll have to ask him. This is not a comedy sketch. This is real. I'm not kidding you. Yep. Don't spoil, Somniostatic. No, don't spoil. Howdy, Rudy here. Alpha Investments. Big news from Mount Gox. So, Mount Gox had a little oopsie. Because as it turns out, they gave, uh, you know, when they were a small company, the founders had access to the website. In fact, they had, they had access to everything. And one of those people, as it turns out, realized that they could take it all and never be caught. And so they did. They took so much money in Bitcoin overnight. Like that. Every person whose money was being held by Mt. Gox, gone. Overnight. Just, pa. The money is gone. And we're talking thousands of, of, of people, some of whom are serious investors, and who just got swept up into the into the Bitcoin thing, their Bitcoin gone. And there's no way you can even track it because Bitcoin is anonymous. There was no way for them to track who it was who took it. Bitcoin act. Yeah, exactly. Like magic. Exactly. Just like magic. It was gone. And it's really funny because... Uh, the fallout was a massive market crash. Confidence in Bitcoin plummeted and the value of Bitcoin just dropped. And we're talking, there are people who were paying um, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. It's not truly anonymous, but it is very difficult. Couldn't they track all the founders? Well, some of them were anonymous. Yeah. I don't remember the exact details of how the founder got away with it, but he pulled off a massive scam. See you later, Busy Bee. Um, and it crashed the Bitcoin market. Uh, we're talking about, uh, we're just, I'm just telling an, a funny anecdote, an internet history anecdote about a very fancy, uh, not so fancy website. See you later, Busy Bee. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, it was a mess. And uh, in fact, it was so bad. I remember I was on Reddit at the time. I used Reddit rel relatively frequently. There was suicide hotline links everywhere on Reddit. Every fucking where. Like all the fuck over the place. Yeah, it was wild. A absolutely fucked. In the blink of an eye. And uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's the thing, right? Yeah, it's insane. We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars disappeared overnight. And again, even though it crashed the market, who cares? The guy who had it, whoever had it, uh, had it and could keep it secret because that's how, big, that's how Bitcoin works. So yeah, pretty bad. Um, yeah, the fallout was ridiculous. People lost so much money. People's lives were destroyed over this. There were people posting on Reddit at the time about how much they've... Um, yeah, uh, oh, for sure. Let's look at the value. What is the value of Bitcoin right now? I don't think they were caught. I can look up. They might have caught them eventually, but um, let me see. Yeah, Bitcoin missing. Bankruptcy stolen Bitcoin. Around 116 million were stolen from an old digital wallet. So nobody even knows. Yeah, so what they use is they had a they had a wallet that had been sitting around forever that nobody knew who it belonged to and that wallet took it. Oh, 
Oh, it's a complete spe it's complete speculation. Yeah, here you go. Here you go. Here it is. Here you go. This is the full story if you want to read the whole thing. If you want to read the entire thing with all the details, it's right there. Um, but let's take a look at what the current value of Bitcoin is. Value. One Bitcoin is equal to, here you go, 37,370 and 40 US dollars. Wow. Yikers. Now, some people gambled on Bitcoin, but just remember, um, just remember that uh, Bitcoin, actually, I think you can actually see on here where the dip was. It was in 2014. And at the time, it was, it seemed like nothing, but yeah. What even deter, oh, that's really complicated, Epimetrius. He's tried and failed eight times. Oh my God, that's terrible. If your partner has Bitcoin, you should you should tell them to go check on it. I'm just saying, if you have old Bitcoin in a wallet, it's probably worth a good amount of money. I made a couple hundred off of the, the, the piece of Bitcoin that I had from a while ago. I was able to pay for part of a trip with it. It's ridiculous. But the thing is that most people haven't had that experience. Keep in mind that it's random. Like this is, it's like gambling. This is like gambling. Fair, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. But that's actually a really good point, Shield Maiden, Lexi. Fairy dust and good intentions. It's just day trading, except, yeah, except way more volatile, Somniostatic. Like, way more volatile. If you're okay, if you are in a secure position and can gamble on it, you can probably make a lot of money, just like you can off of any type of gambling. Like, like, but the problem is, is that it's all speculation. It's all speculation. Because, the Bitcoin isn't tied in most cases to any actual mark. Yes, exactly. There's no actual market. There's nothing being produced. Yeah, see? Yeah, we're on the same wavelength. It's incredibly speculative. Buy you a Coke. Uh, you know what? I'll get you back on that. I think I owe you quite a few Cokes anyway. Um, oh, I like Coke. I wonder if, I wonder if my sodas are going to be here soon. I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, oh, I'm really thirsty. Um, so fiat money, if it was all internet based, it's not a fiat currency is the thing. No, it is not. M Studa baby Demsock. Imagine all the electricity waste. Oh my God. Yes. We could talk about that too. Do you know why, uh, you, you know that it's these fucking Bitcoin people, um, uh, these Bitcoin people have driven up the, the cost of, of graphics cards. Like we should have way cheaper graphics cards, but these motherfuckers will straight up buy like, the, oh my God. Have you seen the video? Oh my God. Look at this. Look at this. Let me see if I can find some images of this shit. Look at this fucking stupid shit. Look at this fucking bullshit. <laughs> this is what they do with, for Bitcoin mining. Look at this shit. It is just CPU, graphics card, graphics card, CPU, graphics card, graphics card, CPU, graphics card, graphics card, all in here with an insane amount of heat. And they will buy hundreds of these and then they will mine bitcoins. And the way that it, it is a fire hazard. In fact, there's there was a story that I read on the internet of a bitcoin miner gave himself brain damage. I'm not kidding you. This was actually verified. I read this from a news source. He gave himself brain damage because he built a, a Bitcoin rig in his um, in his uh, tiny apartment. He bought a tiny apartment to live in so that he could invest a whole bunch of money in Bitcoin. And he built the rig in his room and it was getting so hot at night that he was literally giving himself a fever every single night. And so the fever over time caused brain damage. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was uncomfortable, but he kept doing it because of the money. Wait, here's a video. Wait, is this on the, is this on the guy who did brain damage? Is this the brain damage guy? Hold on, maybe we can watch this. Sorry, this is a total like side thing, but this is interesting nonetheless. Yes, this is the one. Wait, can I, oh, I don't think I can watch this though. It's going to get striked, isn't it? Ah. Oh. Oh, yeah, DMCA, fuck it. Anyway, there's the video if you want to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. I'm just telling you. Wall Street bets? Yes. Wall Street bets is gambling. It is not investing. It is gambling. 
Yeah, it was the heat from the rig. <laughs> True somniostatic. Maybe it was redneck. Um, yeah. But anyway, this is what they do. So the way that Bitcoin works, okay. So the way Bitcoin works, this is the dummy expl explanation of Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, there's, uh, it's all digital. So basically there's these big giant uh, puzzles that need to be solved, okay? This is the dummy version. So just so you get the basic idea of it. The way Bitcoin has worked, there are giant puzzles that need to be solved. And within those puzzles, there are pieces of Bitcoins that any person can get if you have the computational power to solve the puzzle. So the way that you do this, the way that you generate new Bitcoins. Um, now, the thing about Bitcoin, mind you, all of these puzzles across all of the puzzles that exist, there is only a certain amount of Bitcoin. And that means that the value will increase on Bitcoins over time, presumably, because there's only so much and the puzzles get harder and harder and harder. So it becomes difficult. You know, this encourages early adoption, but over time people want to get that last Bitcoins because they're worth a lot. So it keeps the system going. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the whole point is, uh, who builds the puzzles? They're built by a automated system designed by, um, designed by the Bitcoin people. Um, so it's like wildly difficult. Um, the math is really complicated. You have to be mega big brain to actually understand it. It's, it's silly. I don't even have, like, I can't even explain it in full. Fact of the matter is puzzles need to be solved so you can break in and then mine the Bitcoins inside. Oh, you have to be super high? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, 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 I thought you were saying you have to be high to understand it. Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> misunderstood there. Um, but anyway, uh, you can build very, very basic computers like this that all they do is attempt to solve the puzzles. And the thing is, solving the puzzles takes an incredible amount of computational power. Well, how do you get computational power? Well, you get that with CPUs and GPUs. So... Yeah, these are basic, believe it or not. I mean, this look, there's nothing else in here. These don't even run like an OS. These just run mining software. So all of these are hooked together. And these will just endlessly, endlessly calculate to try and break into the bit to get the Bitcoins. And then you get them and then you get money. You sell them and make money. Now, a lot of people don't make any fucking money from this shit. But some people do. Keep in mind that there are um, like corporate Bitcoin farms that will do this times 10,000. Yeah, your electric bills. Yeah, exactly. Your Fact of the matter is most people who get involved in Bitcoin are totally stupid and don't know shit about it. They're also sucking up so much energy that it's damaging the environment and they're driving up the uh, the market for useful products. Precisely. Yes. That's why GPUs are very good for it. They're designed to do that. Um, but yeah, it's, and so now all of us gamers have to suffer. The most oppressed class, all of us gamers have to suffer because these motherfuckers are dumping thousands and thousands of uh, graphics processing unit is what GPU stands for. Um, we all have to suffer because idiot Bitcoin miners, idiot Bitcoin get rich kick quick st st schemes are failing on a massive level. Now, maybe someday there will be a glut, but the fact of the matter is, um, oh God, and this is another thing. There are GPUs that are designed specifically for Bitcoin farms. And you have to be careful because uh, Newegg will sometimes overstock on those and try to sell them as a gaming, uh, as a gaming graphics card, but they only have like one output. So you can't like, this actually happened to me. I didn't know this. Thankfully I was able to resell it, but, uh, like I got a, I got a, a GPU from Newegg that was specifically designed for Bitcoin farming and had one output. So I couldn't even dual monitor with this thing that I bought. It's terrible. So be careful about that sort of thing because there's a lot of GPUs that are designed not for graphics, but specifically for processing Bitcoin. It's really dumb. Is that true, Yovano? I don't think that's true. I don't I don't think that it's a myth. I think it's true. 
As far as I know, they still do this. Because the thing is, we're not talking about smart, we're not always talking about smart people. These people will look up a guide online and they'll say, oh, well, uh, 3070, that's a good card. Let me get it. You know what I mean? This is, this is, these are the, these are the fucking suburban get rich quick guys. They got a lot of debt or whatever. Cause they're, cause of, oh, my wife, my wife wanted a Camaro and now I'm in debt. Oh, I got to find a way to make money. That kind of thing. It's that. It's wife guys. It's a lot of those guys. There's a lot of wife guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, law boy. You know what I'm talking about. Got cucked. Need need Bitcoin. Yes. It's so true. Painfully true. Yeah, but see, Yovano, they don't know that and they don't care. None of these people are going to make money off of it. You can't... Look, this guy right here can't compete with fucking this shit. Let me just show you what you're competing against and why this will never fucking work. Watch. Ready? Here you go. Wait, hold on. Let me find this real quick. Okay, ready? Ready? Watch this. Here's, here's, oh, my wife bought a Camaro. I need to come up with a get-rich-quick scheme. If I put $50,000 into a, a home Bitcoin mining rig, I'll be able to pay off my debts. Here's who's actually making money. Boom. 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 There you go. Yeah. These are the people who are making money. They've got 40 of these in one of these. Sorry, that's screaming. I'm screaming. But I'm trying to tell people, please, for the love of God, this will not beat this. It's not going to happen. Aw, see you later, Grime Dango. I'll talk to you tonight. Bye. Yep. So, uh, if anybody tries to get you into fucking Bitcoin, like Jack on Twitter, you should you should give them the side eye and go, you know, it kind of sounds like you you want more dupes to get into all your thing because Jack probably has a bunch of Bitcoin because he owns Twitter. He's the CEO of Twitter. And he wants the value of Bitcoin to go up. And the way that the value of Bitcoin goes up is if a bunch of dumb people weigh in and try to day trade and speculate. And it, it's, it's stupid. Just, it's stupid. Yes, he's advertising faith in Bitcoin. Yes. Yeah, it's exactly right. Yes, precisely somniostatic. The, he is increasing his the value of his own Bitcoin by roping other people in. It's, it's horrible. It's terrible. Also, if you want to know another one, you want to know another tragedy, here's another quick tragedy. Sorry, I this shit drives me nuts. But if you want to know another tragedy, look into Ethereum. You want to know Ethereum is another cryptocurrency. It's a cryptocurrency that was not ever supposed to be traded as a cryptocurrency. It was designed specifically to um, help with app deployment. Complicated. Complicated nerd shit. The Ethereum devs on their home page have a huge rant saying how stupid Bitcoin assholes are. Stop buying Ethereum and trading it on the market. We're trying to make something to help people with a very specific solution uh, for help programmers trade, trade processing power among one another. And they're mad. They've literally, the actual creators of Ethereum have been screaming at speculators because they didn't want their cryptocurrency to become this, but it has. And, and you'll look, if you look up Ethereum, uh, where's the value? Here you go. One ether equals 1,102.83. Yeah. See, people have been trading this shit all over the place. So, yeah. Uh, I had friends that were super into super into trading cryptocurrency, and in fact, I had I had some cryptocurrency of my own at the, at one point. Again, I got rid of it because I had material needs to meet. Um, yes, Dogecoin was a, a originally made to make fun of cryptocurrencies, became a popular one. Yes, it did. 
Tulip Mania. Oh boy. You should make a cryptocurrency? Oh, well, then you're getting into even... Well, all right, listen. Oh, my God. Oh, no. A market collapse on fucking tulips. Oh, Jesus. Holy shit. Oh, my God. This is so good. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, wait. You can't see the last point. Boop, boop. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, God damn it. God damn it. They've been doing it. These grifters have been doing it for all of history. Jesus Christ. Tulip stonks. I would not buy cryptocurrency. I had cryptocurrency. I mined cryptocurrency a little bit back in the day and got enough to like make a couple hundred off of it. That's it. I didn't mine it with anything fancy. At the time, you were, it was possible to mine a little bit and it was meaningless. At the time, it was worthless. Um, it was worthless at the time. It was just a, a novelty. And I had a computer with a strong graphics card. So I just, when I would go to bed, I would just turn on the, the miner. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I didn't, I never, I don't think I ever bought cryptocurrency. I think I bought it once to specifically, I don't even remember. Hmm. Anyway. Hmm. Yeah, one of these days. Oh, God. You know, this reminds me of... Oh, God. This reminds me of collectible coin grifts. Holy shit. <laughs> 